Welcome students once again to the chapter 3 financial statements. In the last class we have started with the discussion on the contents of balance sheet. To continue from there we will be discussing today the remaining elements. To start with the first point that is non current liability on the liability side. Previously we have discussed share capital and now we are discussing non current liability. As the name suggests it is a long term liability with settlement time of more than 12 months of reporting date that is balance sheet date. If we are going to settle a liability after 12 months from this date of balance sheet it is called long term liability that is a non current liability like debentures, long term loans and deferred tax. Now, this is a new concept deferred tax. I will be coming to it in detail after some time. Next point payment for fixed assets purchased on credit. Next long term provisions like employee benefit, provident fund contributions, warranties etcetera. Next topic is current liability on the liability side that is short term borrowings, trade payables, goods purchased on credit, others which include unpaid dividend, interest accrued and due or not due, income received in advance, calls in advance, short term provisions, doubtful debts, provision for tax and proposed dividend. All these things are contained in current liabilities because they have to be settled within a period of 12 months. So, there are two items first non current asset and second current asset. Now, let us understand first what is a current asset. The answer is any asset to be realized in an operating cycle. Now, operating cycle means the time of acquiring and realization time. This is taken as an operating cycle, but if nothing is mentioned it has to be taken as 12 months. So, whatever asset is realized in an operating cycle is a current asset. If it is held for trading or it is a cash or cash equivalent. So, naturally non current asset means which is not fulfilling these conditions. So, let us start with our non current asset first fixed asset in which we have to tell the detail what are the tangible fixed assets. Now, tangible means which are physical like land, building etcetera. Then next point is intangible assets which are non physical like goodwill, trademarks, computer software etcetera. Next is capital work in progress. Suppose we are constructing a fixed asset. Now, this capital work is still in progress and it will result in creation of an asset. So, this also come under fixed asset. Next point is intangible asset under development. Suppose the company is developing patents or intellectual rights that will come under this head. The next point under this head is non current investments as the name suggests these are not held for resale. Next important point is deferred tax asset. I hope you remember there was a deferred tax liability on the liability side. Now, if we understand what is deferred tax asset we will be able to know what is deferred tax liability also. Now, if our taxable income according to income tax act is greater than our accounting income shown by profit and loss account then we have to pay more tax than what is coming in our accounting income right. To take an example if our net profit is 1 lakh and our taxable income is 1 lakh 50 thousand. So, we will be paying tax according to income tax act on 1 lakh 50 thousand. So, we are paying more tax. So, it is a deferred tax asset. Similarly, if our taxable income is 
less than accounting income, then we will paying less tax and that becomes a deferred tax liability. Okay. Once again to recollect, if taxable income is greater than accounting income, we are paying more tax, more tax means deferred tax asset and less tax means deferred tax liability. I hope it is clear. Next point, long term loans and advances, these are the contents of non current asset. Now, to start with what are current assets? First point, current investments which are held for resale within 12 months. Next, inventories which comprise of raw material, work in process, finished goods, stores and spares and loose tools. Third, trade receivables that is amount due for goods sold debtors. Next point, cash and cash equivalent. This I have already told you what comes under this head is cash, bank and drafts. Next point, short term loans and advances and in the end there are other current assets like advanced tax, prepaid expense, they come under this category. Please go through revised schedule 6, which is given in your books. This time, this is going to be very important. Let us understand the contents by way of a question on share capital. Let us start the question. A company issued 1 lakh equity shares of rupees 100 each. Out of the above, 2500 shares are issued to vendors against purchase of plant and machinery. I hope you remember this has to be shown separately. Remaining shares were issued to public that is 75,000 shares. So, we are not issuing the whole shares, we are issuing 75,000 shares to public, 2500 shares to vendors. The remaining are still there in the authorized capital. The amount to be called was application 30 rupees, allotment 40 rupees, first call 30 and we have not called first call this time. So, the amount will be received up to allotment only. Now, we have to show share capital in the balance sheet and the notes to accounts. So, let us start with first notes to account. In note number 1, we will show authorized capital. 1 lakh equity share at the rate of 100 that is 1 crore. Then issued capital, first of all we will show separately those 2500 shares which are issued as fully paid to vendors 2500 into 100 that is 2 lakh 50 thousand and the remaining 75000 shares issued to public at the rate of 100 7 lakh 50 thousand no it is 75 lakhs because 75,000 into 100 makes it 75 lakh. But when we will be showing subscribed and fully paid, then we will be showing 2500 shares at the rate of 100 to lakh 50,000 and subscribed but not fully paid 75,000 shares at the rate of 35 paid because we have not called 15 rupees final call yet. So, it makes it 52 lakh 50 thousand in the subscribed and fully paid column. Let us understand some more important items as to where they are shown in the balance sheet. We will be discussing the items, their head and their subhead. Let us start with the first point, uncalled liability on partly paid shares. This is shown under the head commitments, contingent liability and commitments right in the notes to the account and the subhead is nothing because it is a notes. Second point, premium on redemption of debentures, it is shown under non current liabilities because we have to pay it in future. So, the subheading is other long term liability. Please remember the main head is non current liability and in that non current liability the subhead will be 
other long term liability. These kind of questions generally come in the exams. To discuss with the third point, security deposits for telephone etcetera. Now, this is a non current asset, because it is not going to be realized within 12 months and it will come under long term loans and advances. Now, it is not a loan, it is an advance given to the telephone company. Next point, employees earned leave payable on retirement, it is a very long term liability. So, it will come under the head non current liability and the subheading will be long term provisions. Next point, proposed dividend, this is a current liability because it has to be paid within one year and the subheading will be current provisions. Next point is prepaid expenses, this comes under current asset and the subheading will be other current assets. Goodwill, this comes under non current asset and the subheading is intangible assets. Similarly, you can practice about some more heads and some more items from your book. Now, let us come to another topic that is what are the uses and importance of financial statements. The first point is it reports on the management effectiveness that is whether they have achieved the targets fixed or not and if at all there is any deficiency how they are going to correct it. Second point the basis for fiscal policies of the company. The company decides about taxation and economic policies on the basis of these financial statements. Next, it is a very strong basis for loan from banks, because when the bank gives you a loan, they ask for the audited financial statements. Next, it is a basis for prospective investors, prospective means those who want to invest in the company, they would like to know whether it is profitable to invest in that company or not. So, for these they will be requiring financial statements and if they are audited that will be very fine for them. Next, it is a guide for investments already made. Those who have already invested in the company, they must know whether they are reaping good results or not and this is also clear from the good financial statements. Next point. It helps in making the industry average for comparison in future. We compile the data for all the industries and make some ratios which are on an average existing in that company group and it helps other companies to make their data comparable. And the last but not the least, it helps the stock exchange also to compile the data of various companies, various sectors and then give the investors some good opinion on where to invest in which sector to invest. So, today we have discussed about the various contents of the balance sheet, the use and importance of the financial statements and other details. In the next class, we will be discussing another chapter financial analysis in which we will be seeing comparative statements and common size statements. These again are very important because there is a change this time. Till then, thank you, goodbye.